How many do you guys know that the journey is never ending? There's always going to be growth, improvement. Hey, adversity is going to come. You just got to take it in and just do what's right. Continue to grow. Continue to strive for greater heights. Fortnite's best players just didn't become legends overnight. Hey, it took them time to grind, right? To practice. And most of all, they needed that motivation. That's what Antonio Brown said, one of the best wide receivers in NFL history, who recently had uh, some issues with his helmet and feet. But anyways, he said, no matter who you are, there's room to improve. Even, yes, yours truly, Booga, is continually trying to get better and better because if he doesn't, other players are going to pass him up. And maybe, hey, that could be you. You never know. Although at a certain point, improving can be tough, it seems like there is a plateau where you just can't grow anymore, right? It's like you just hit this proverbial ceiling and you just can't go higher. Well, let me tell you this, my friends. That simply isn't true. Hey, what's up, guys? This is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. Hey, connect with me on my Instagram. I'm posting up encouraging vids for you guys to get better at Fortnite. In this guide, we're going to tell you tips on how to improve and just general tips on the game as well. This is catered to Season 10 to help you guys slay out. Who's ready to do that? Raise your hands. Yeah, I see you. All right, so before we get started, hey, Pro Guys has a small announcement to make. We're going to be adding a ton of new features to our site, exclusive guide videos for our pro members. Also, Pro Pass now grants all access to all games. We also have more free coaching passes and points for InstaPro if you're a pro member. So head on over to Pro Guys by clicking the link in the description below. All right, so now we got all that out of the way. I'm excited to get this video going. Let's do this. Okay, so landing is a big deal. I think my two-year-old nephew knows that. He's really cute. It's the start of the game, and depending on your landing, it can decide the course that the rest of the game is going to take. It's like a butterfly effect, where one thing can just lead to a chain of events that affects the entire game. Who knows? Obviously, we can't go over the best place to deploy in every game, but there are some things that you can do which will result in better drops every single time. So we're not going to be giving you specific spots to land because that depends on your preference and, you know, what's worked for you. Certain places, you know, work better for certain people. Although in general, landing somewhere else less crowded is ideal, but that's pretty tough to do when everyone's just trying to do that. Frankly, the drop is a lot of RNG, and handling that is part of being a really good player. So the ideal place to land is on a chest on top of a roof. That'll give you an excellent high ground starting position, right? And a solid vantage point on any enemies that are still dropping or, or in the open. Of course, chests don't spawn every single time, so it's a really high risk, high reward play, which isn't reliable enough. To get the best drop possible, you should turn on visual cues, which makes it a lot easier to see if there are any chests. With that on, or if you have a loud enough volume, you could just eventually see the chest before you drop. When there isn't a chest, then you could just fly away and go somewhere else. That's really the best way. But where should you drop in the first place? Good question. Well, in general, landing on the edges of the point of interest is safer than the center because there are fewer places to get targeted. You can also build faster if you're getting targeted from multiple angles. You know, honestly, so many people die in the early game because now it's like, where do I go after the first game? Well, that's what we're going to be getting into next. Rotations. A lot of people are just clueless when it comes to rotations. They think that you should just move indirectly to where the safe zone is. Well, that's definitely not true. Rotations are so important. I mean, watch any pro and you're going to probably realize that they're not just going places randomly. Each one of their rotations is planned out. Trust me, it just isn't apparent to most people. So there are different rotations depending on what type of game you're going for. But this game is going to be focusing on arena and scrim type games. In a solo squads game, for example, you would never want to push with the zone. You'd be rotating towards wherever the people are. So keep in mind the purpose of this tutorial. You're going to want to base your rotations off where you are and how many people you expect to encounter and what the zone is. Okay, so let's just say you drop in Westworld, right? And the zone is centered around Loot Lake. Now, the rotations in the early game aren't quite as vital as they're in mid or late game because you can always just change your positioning, but they still require some excellent decision making. In general, if you're in the zone, you don't want to just move anywhere else. As long as you have a lot of mats, then you should just box up until the next zone comes in. Usually, moving early will only lead you to getting third party. So find the right spot to turtle up, preferably somewhere on high ground, and just chill there. So if you're on low ground, you'll probably end up being the target of multiple people. During mid game, it gets a little more complicated. Ideally, you have enough mobility to push late, but if not, then it's a good idea to just leave early. Especially during mid game, there are lots of people around the border of the zone, which means there are lots of people to surround and kill you. Instead, hey, get the jump on them, and you can catch them off guard from inside the zone. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, you should leave about 45 seconds before the zone will push you in. That's going to give you enough time to take a fight on the way and turtle up in a good spot. All right, so as far as late game goes, whoo, 
these are probably the hardest rotations. Considering how much is going on, I mean, it can really just be tough just to go the way you want to go. That makes it pretty hard to just give consistent advice, so take this, guys, with a grain of salt. But usually, you know, you want to rotate early. Everyone wants to rotate at the end, so unless you're going for a high kill game, then you're going to want to go as soon as you can. Yes, you know, people might not be behind as much, but it's actually better most of the time. It'll be so much less hectic and more comfortable to just get where you want to go, and there will be fewer people contesting one spot. All right, so, like, take this scenario. It's late game, right? And you see a mountain that hasn't yet been exposed by the zone. So, what do you do now? Well, what you should do is get as close as possible, even before the mountain comes into the zone. That way, you're going to have the earliest direction onto height. All right, so let's see how Selage handles it here. We're going to play the entire clip and then go over it. Now, can I do this? Can I do that? And getting a good read on what's going on in the match is what is very important to me and will help me judge what I want to do. For example, I take height here because I didn't see anybody else up on height that was close to me. And I have an RPG, so if I have to, I can take down some builds. But I don't really have to for the most part. All right, so see how that entire area is open for the taking. <laughs> wow, that's exactly what you want. Watch how he actually gets to that area. By using this type of tunnel, and since everyone is so busy rotating, he has time to take the high ground. That puts him in a place where the people are, and so he doesn't have to use any mats. Those are the kind of minor things, guys, that pros are doing and just simply were not. As soon as he gets to that spot, he starts to assess the situation. Since he left early, everyone else is busy rotating while he has time to do a few 90s to get to height. That puts him in a better spot for the rest of the game, which he actually holds into the end. So if you're lost right now and you're probably thinking to yourself, I'm never going to be able to make these decisions in game. Hey guys, look, this just comes down to how good your game sense is. So cheer up and be encouraged, you can do it. So game sense is the most crucial skill in the entire game. I always say this on my Instagram, period. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what is it? Well, it's basically how well you know the game. When other people will decide to rotate, whether or not you should push, or basically every decision that other players make. You might not even know how good your game sense is, it's just all the way in the back of your head, all right? There are so many pros that have dominated the scene, not because they have some crazy edits or builds or whatever, but because they have such solid knowledge and foundation of the game. Booga's not just a creative warrior, okay? What makes this guy so good is that he has some of the best mechanics in the game and he uses his godly game sense to just make good use of his skills. So good builders who can't win in the actual game is actually where the term creative warrior was invented. So obviously it's pretty essential. But how can you become as good as Booga? Well, when it comes to your decision making, which is pretty hard to improve, but you can do it. It just takes a lot of work. You know, while it slowly develops naturally, there are certain ways that you can just more efficiently and quickly accelerate the progress. One of those things, guys, is just watching your own clip. I cannot stress this enough. Watch your own games, guys. It really does help. That's just something that really separates the pros from the rest of us. It's their ability to watch and more importantly, learn from what they watch. All right, if you're watching your footage, but then you forget what you're watching and who you're watching, then that's a sign that you need to wake up, okay? Please, you got to learn from your footage. So spectating yourself allows you to think about each situation a lot more clearly and actually make a conscious decision. Eventually, those decisions will become natural. If you got eliminated and felt that it was because of the game, hey, it probably wasn't, okay? Take a look back at the replay. Think about all the decisions that led up to you getting eliminated. Was it the landing, the rotation, the wrong edit? Hey, make a mental note of why you got eliminated and then just go into another game. Do the exact same thing you did last game, except make the changes that you took note of. Hey, you're going to honestly be shocked at how much you got better, all right? You can even talk it through in your head. Just not like a crazy person, but you know what I mean. So another thing that you can watch even when you aren't at your setup is pro players' vibes. There are so many things you can learn from them, so don't just watch them. Focus on what they're doing. Just watching them isn't enough. Actually, take some notes. Even though it looks so effortless to you, they're actually thinking through everything they do. So just try to go through that process with them too. In fact, you can actually watch VODs where pros explain each of their own decisions, so you don't have to figure it out all by yourself. For example, Bala has some insanely helpful videos where he reviews the VODs of different pro players and makes insights into what they did right and what they did wrong. Honestly, this is probably the best way to learn about the game. So take this advice and guys, make it happen. So there are so many decisions that go into each game. It seems like it's impossible to make all of them on the fly, but hey, you'd be surprised. 
At some point, it'll all just be subconscious decisions, and you'll just be able to focus on other aspects of the game instead. But here's a little recap for you. You ready? All right, so don't land in the center of a town so you can rotate out. Very smart. If you're in the zone during early game, don't move. If you're not in the zone during early or mid game, rotate as early as possible. Game sense, my friends, is insanely important. Remember that. Watch yourself and others to get better at it and faster. Okay, so did this help you? Let us know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we can put out more videos that you like. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen, and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. We got a lot going on.